Okay, so we have kind of a consistent issue with the VNA-8 condensers from Carrier where they're really susceptible to over voltage. If you look at the power supply, it's rated for 208, 230. And so remember 230, the permissible maximum voltage is 253. And what we found is these things have catastrophic board failure whenever you get consistently over 253. So you can see right here on our ICM 493, we have a uh, voltage over, over voltage condition that's resulting in it not running. What we're gonna do today, because we've called the power company and they're just not being helpful. Um, and also it gets worse at night, right now it's in the middle of the day and we've seen it all the way up to 260. So we're gonna go ahead and just put in our own buck and boost transformer to drop this voltage down uh, enough to allow it to safely operate. And we're gonna do that before our ICM-493. Um, and then going so the ICM-493 can still protect the condenser. So for safety's sake, we always shut off the breaker. But before we actually start touching anything, we check to a known voltage source. So I'm gonna check from one leg to ground to make sure that my meter reads it. And then I'm gonna check from leg to leg and then leg to ground and make sure the power's off before we start disconnecting and installing our buck and boost transformer. In this case, I say buck and boost transformer, but really buck and boost just means either boost, which is increased voltage, or buck, which is decreased voltage. So we're gonna be using it for buck. So this is 0.75 kVA, that's kilovolt amps. So that's thousands of volt amps. So that's a 750 VA transformer. Now when you look at this, you really have to look at the specs to make sense of what all of this means. Because on face value, it looks like, well, we've got a primary 240 or 120 volts. Then you got all this additional jazz. And if you don't speak the language of buck and boost transformers, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense to you. So, we got to look at the manual. All right, so you can see we've got the primary is 120x240, secondary is 1632. Yeah, this is what we're looking at here. And we've got not the 0.75. This is something you can easily make a mistake. It's not 0.075. It's 0.75 so this is what we've got and we're trying to buck boosting is a reduction in voltage we're trying to reduce our voltage from we're actually gonna be more like 250 255 in this range we're gonna drop it down to this lower and if you look here this will show us what our rating is from amperage which is perfect so we've got 50 amps so we're in good shape there. Plenty of capacity. That's what we're going to be setting it up as, which is the C wiring configuration on this diagram. So now we got to find the C wiring configuration. Now I've turned to the buck boost connection diagram. We're going to go to figure C, which is what it's calling for here. So this is how we're going to connect it. This is our higher voltage. So this would be our, and this is kind of confusing because this is actually, this higher voltage here is our primary, and this lower voltage is going to be our secondary that we want. And so you're going to see that our A phase just travels straight across. That's what makes this different than a typical transformer where you have isolated primary and secondary. You can see the secondary and primary are directly connected on this A phase. But we have to make sure to connect everything exactly as shown here in order to have it work properly. And we're definitely gonna test the voltage coming out of this transformer before we connect it to our actual unit. Our marked, as shown in the diagram, we just have all of these connectors. So, we have to connect them together properly. And uh, we also have our ground, so our ground on the inside there, that we gotta connect. So, there we go. Got to get this right exactly according to the diagram, figure C. Okay, so Jesse just showed me this. He's holding the camera for me. Because I've always taken these all the way off. And then you got to, like, unthread these. But what he showed me is that you don't actually have to do that. You just leave them threaded on. And then it has a little indent in there. And so you can just take it off like that. Watch me. I'm going to show my really poor baby muscles. No. No, this does work. So you just don't take it all the way off. And then kind of unthreads itself. Now I know that's stupid, um, but I literally never knew that because nobody ever showed me. And now I've showed you, so there you have it. Okay, so now we've got our low voltage secondary going out to our ICM 493. 
and we've got our high voltage primary coming in there. We need to wire this all up according to high figure C. Yep, figure C. Input side. We can actually drop down a little bit. So we're right on the edge of unacceptable at this point. Now let's see what we got coming in to the ICM 493 out of our buck and boost transformer in buck mode, wired up to buck. There we go. Now we are right there at pretty much rated voltage because this thing is, like I said, rated at 230, which is sort of interesting. We left this disconnected just to make sure that we were gonna have the proper voltage before we fired it up. So now we're gonna wire up and fire up. Now, you can see our line voltage is 237. Got our amp clamp on it, ready for it to run. And uh, we're gonna run test it. But 237 is much closer to the rated voltage and now it gives us tolerance both ways. And we have this set up to plus or minus 10% now, um, which is gonna put us in much more stable ground as far as the rating of this carrier. BNA8. So that's it. Using the Buck and Boost transformer. Thanks for watching.